Polish chess history is important. While it has not yet produced a world champion, some of the greatest players in chess history hail from Poland, such as Zyman Wenauer, Johannes Zukertort, Akiva Rubinstein, Savielli Tartakawa, and Mieczysław Nydorf. No one is certain when chess arrived in Poland. The first references to the game date from the reign of Boleslav the Rymouthed in the 12th century. Some say chess spread from Persia to Russia along the Volga River trade route and then to Poland. Others suggest chess arrived with Viking marauders who plundered Poland from the 8th to the 10th centuries perhaps leaving only the gift of chess. Some maintain chess arrived from Germany at the end of the First Crusade. The Crusade prompted a horrific pogrom against the Jews, who were considered second only to the Muslims as the enemies of Christendom. In 1096 AD, Poland welcomed thousands of European Jews fleeing the pogroms. Duke Władysław Herman believed the refugees would bring new economic and cultural life to Poland. Chess may have been one of these cultural benefits. The oldest known chess pieces from Poland were found at Sandomierz in 1962. Dating from around 1200 AD, they were constructed from deer antlers. The Chronicle of Janko records that by the 13th century, chess already played an important role in Polish culture. In the 16th century, Queen Bonus Vorza popularized chess amongst the Polish aristocracy. Bonus Forza came from Italy, and she caused great curiosity about Italian culture. In 1564, Jan Kokonowski wrote a poem about chess, adapted from a work by the Italian writer Marco Vida. In the poem, a chess game dramatizes the winning of a fair maiden. Theodore and Borzu play for a dear prize. The winner will marry the beautiful Princess Anna. Borzu takes the black pieces and the game is adjourned in this position, black to move. It seems that black cannot avoid checkmate. Anna secretly visits the board at night and solves the problem. She gives Borzu a mysterious clue. It's no loss to surrender a dear thing for someone beloved. Borzu realizes he must sacrifice his rook, the dearest piece he has left on the board. What's the lesson of this poem? Well, Maybe that a chess queen prefers this kind of man as opposed to this kind of man. In the 18th century, Poland was divided by Russia, Austria, and Prussia. After the Congress of Vienna in 1815, Russia dominated 80% of Polish territory. For this reason, 19th century Polish chess is closely associated with the Russian Empire. In the 1830s, the Poznan and Warsaw chess clubs began cross-city challenges. The strongest player from Warsaw became one of the strongest chess players in history. Zyman Winauer a businessman, was trained by Russian master Alexander Petrov. According to legend, Winauer was traveling on business 
when he entered the Paris Chess Congress of 1867 on a whim. This was a very strong tournament, part of the Paris World Exhibition. When our wanted to represent Poland, but the Russian ambassador lodged a protest, claiming that Winauer was a Russian citizen. Tournament officials compromised, listing him as a representative of the city of Warsaw. Winauer's performance justified empires fighting over his provenance. He finished second, ahead of a young Wilhelm Steinitz. Winauer's greatest triumph was his shared first at the Vienna Congress of 1882. At this point in history, it was the strongest chess tournament of all time. In this game against Steinitz from the Vienna 1882 playoff, Winauer scores with the black pieces in one of the wildest tussles in chess history. There are too many mistakes in this wonderful game for it to be considered an immortal. American chess expert Scott Thompson suggests we label this the mortal game. Although it was Winauer who shared first at Vienna 1882, most regarded Johannes Zuckertort to have been the stronger player. Zuckertort was born in Lublin in 1842. In 1861 he started medical studies at the University of Breslau. At this time, Breslau was part of the Prussian Empire. In this painting, the Polish leaders of Breslau acknowledge King Frederick of Prussia to be their master. Zuckertort's medical training, however, suffered from many distractions. He joined a student organization called the Polish Slavic Literary Society. This led professors to put him on a list of students suspected of aiding the insurrection of 1863. The insurrection was widespread in the Russian part of Poland, and the Russian army put it down with great savagery. Zukertort was also distracted by this man. Since his triumph at the world's first international chess tournament in 1851, Adolf Anderson had been considered the unofficial world champion. Zuckertort studied under Anderson, and in 1871, the student beat his teacher, five games to two, in Berlin. In a few short years, Zuckertort had become one of the best chess players in the world. In 1872, he gave up all pretense of studying medicine and moved to London to become a professional chess player. This put him on a collision course with Steinitz, who had also beaten Anderson in a match. In 1872, the Titans squared off in a match. Zuckertort offered no resistance, winning only a single game. Zuckertort took his revenge by winning the London 1883 tournament in such convincing style that many people, especially Zuckertort himself, regarded him to be the best player in the world. In the first round, Zuckertort surprised Chigorin with the black pieces in this swashbuckling attack. He would finish the event with an astonishing 22 wins out of 26 rounds. The 
stage was set for a showdown. In 1886, Zuckertort met Steinitz in the world's first official world championship. In the first leg, played in New York, Zuckertort established a commanding three-game lead. The second leg, however, played in St. Louis, was a disaster. Zuckertort became frustrated with the playing conditions. The gas heater was right next to the board, roasting the players. In the third game in St. Louis, Zuckertort's clock broke and there was no spare. They had to wait until a local jeweler could repair it. Excuses aside, Zuckertort faded for some reason. He won only one more game. Two years later, he died. Zuckertort's legacy, however, is secure. To this day, he remains one of only two Polish masters to play for the World Championship. Jerzy Salve is important to Polish chess history, although not many have heard of him before. By 1882, Salve was the best club player in Warsaw, his hometown. He moved to Lodz in search of stronger opposition. At the turn of the century, Lodz was a robust city featuring a vibrant mixture of Poles, Russians, Germans and Jews. Salve won the city championship in 1898. A year later, he tied David Janowski in a two-game match. Though born in Poland, Janowski lived in Paris. He was already an international master and had beaten Chigorin, Pillsbury, Steinitz and Lasker. By 1900, Salve was one of the best players in Poland. 1903 was a big year for Polish chess, featuring the rise of Rubinstein and the growing fame of the Lodz Chess Club, which became one of the three chess pillars of the Russian Empire, in addition to St. Petersburg and Kiev. Solvay tied Rubinstein in a qualifying match for the All-Russian Championship to be held in Kiev in 1903. Because they tied, both masters entered the All-Russian Championship. Salve finished 4th and Rubinstein 5th behind Chigorin. A year later, Salve won the All-Russian Championship at St. Petersburg. Salve was well liked by the other players. In fact, Ossip Bernstein liked to play jokes on him. At Ostend, Bernstein convinced him that the word Salve, which means welcome in Latin, was carved on a stairwell to greet him personally. There may be good reason to doubt this story, since Bernstein was prone to spread such humorous tales, whether true or not. What's not in doubt is that Bernstein won the tournament. In 1913, Salve started Shak Zeitung, the first Yiddish chess journal. Akiva Rubinstein, his rival and good friend, was a frequent contributor. In this game against Rubinstein, played in Lodz, 1904, Salve takes the black pieces and punishes his friend with a sharp bishop sack. The next era in Polish chess, however, would belong to Rubinstein. In 